Hello there, wonderful people of God, people who are conscious of the fact that there is no measuring unit for difficulty, as well as the fact that there is no measuring rod with respect to how much difficulty every human being can handle. Yes, that explains why Matthew 11, 28 to 30 urges us to come, all who are weary and heavy laden, and that God will give us rest. Hallelujah. Warm welcome to your weekly gospel encouragement program, Meaningful 5 Minutes with Mommy Reads, where we use biblical tidbits to encourage ourselves and miss daily discouragements. We heartily appreciate everyone who is making an effort to like, to comment, to share, and to subscribe. We pray that as you continue to do so, may God continue to do you good in Jesus' name. If you are yet to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Meaningful 5 Minutes with Mommy Reads, this is an appeal for you to please do so, so that together we can do our utmost to get the gospel across the ends of the earth. May God bless you as you subscribe and share. My brother, my sister, if Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, quit living a life of sin. Accept Christ as your Lord and Savior now that you still have the opportunity to do so. And if you once gave your life to Christ but took it back for one reason or the other, it's advisable to give that life to Christ now before it becomes too late. And if Christ is actually Lord and Savior of your life, endeavor to live a life that is pleasant in the sight of the Father and that will serve as a magnet and not a repellent to the watching world. We pray for ways and directions to keep getting the gospel across so that that brother and that sister can come to the saving knowledge of Christ like yourself self and myself may god equip and empower us in jesus name by the special grace of god we've been able to share several topics from slot 1 to slot 272 the last being the fact that we should be bridges and not dams our behavior should be such that god can give us an open check the way an open check was given to joseph so that jacob and all the members of his household were able to benefit from the blessings that joseph had brought into the family we pray that God will help us to practice what we preach in Jesus' name. Today, by the grace of God, in Slots 273, we crave your indulgence to bear with us because this episode will be a little bit longer than usual. Reason being that, cognizant of the fact that the whole world is mourning the loss of a popular Nigerian actress by name Ada Ame, we will be taking this time to pick out some of the lessons that we can learn from her life in order to improve upon our own lives and make sure that we don't make the same mistakes or that we get certain things done the right way. Our topic for today is handling difficult moments. Handling difficult moments. Yes, and our main passage is Revelation chapter 21 from verse 1 to 7 with the key verse being verse 4 in which we are told that God himself will wipe all our tears in the land in which there's no sorrow, there's no death and there is no pain. That can only be in heaven and that will only be amongst the saints who will make it to heaven when the rapture eventually of course but before we get into the nitty-gritties of today i want us to understand certain things you know in life a difficulty is that situation that you did not plan for some difficulties are those things that make you uncomfortable they make you restless they make you ill at ease they are the things that you have little or no control over you have little or no power to change but life happens from time to time and when life happens what are we expected to do you discover that some difficulties are unplanned and they are unexpected. For instance, as a parent, you have put in your utmost, you have invested, you have put your hopes in, upon the life of a child. And then at some point in time, that child disappoints you. Maybe that child becomes pregnant out of wedlock, that child becomes an addict, or that child derails in one way or the other. As a parent, this is not what you bargained for. And it is something that can take you off guard. It's something that can discourage you, that can make you to wet your pillows with tears. It's something that can make you to get into a shock or that can have devastating consequences on you. And in most cases, you discover that parents in such situations might find themselves maybe chasing the child away from home. You are abandoning that child to the hands of faith. You are making a bad situation worse. Another instance of difficulty might be the instance where maybe a child has gotten married and then the marriage is not working according to plan. But because of your reputation, because of your status, because of your friends, because of your this and your that, you send that child back into that marriage and tell the child that marriage is for better, for worse. You are not doing that because you have the child's interest at heart. You are doing that because you want to preserve or protect your own image, your own integrity and your own reputation. It is time for us to understand that the way we 
treat people who are going through difficulties, especially children, especially blood relatives. It matters a lot because at the end of the day, if we are not helping a situation, we might just be making a bad situation worse. That, that difficulty has come that we did not plan for, that we did not bargain for, does not mean that we will do the things that are not expected of us. Yes, it is easier said than done, but what are we expected to do? The Bible has told us in Philippians 4.13 that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so as a parent, as a guardian, as a relative, as a friend, be the kind of person who gives an elbow room for unforeseen disappointments. It is not like you are planning or you are preparing for it, but you have just told yourself that we are human beings and so shit can happen. Sometimes people can behave in a way that is not right. And so instead of getting uncomfortable, get, going into an early grave, going into a situation that is unpleasant for you, the consent party and also the victim, just put it at the back of your mind that mistakes can happen. And so when you prepare yourself like that psychologically, if the mistake eventually happens, you will not be as shocked. You will not be as hard hit like somebody who did not give that elbow room, who did not give that preparation for the unforeseen disappointment. That's not to say we are praying for disappointment, but it is just to prepare ourselves, both the people who are receiving the shocking news and the people themselves who are the victims of the shocking news. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You discover that sometimes in life, some people, the way they handle difficult moments is to transfer aggression. Yes, you did not bargain for that difficulty. You did not write an application letter for that difficulty to come, but it came all the same. And you discover that some people, they have the tendency of shifting the pain to other people. It did not start today. Look at the instance of Jabez' mother in 2 Chronicles 4, 9 to 10. The Bible says that she felt so much pain that she had to name her child Jabez, meaning pain. She's not the only one in that category. What about Rachel? In Genesis 35, 18, the Bible says that she's in labor and she's feeling so much pain. And then when she eventually gives birth to the child, the only thing that she can use her last breath to do is to name him Benoni, son of my sorrow. This is a transferred aggression that will haunt the victims, the innocent victims for the rest of their lives. Fortunately, Jabez was able to realize that he had to pray for him to make things different in his life. Fortunately for Benoni, his father Jacob was sensitive, sensitive enough to change his name from son of my sorrow, Benoni, to Benjamin, meaning son of the south. When we go through difficulties, when we are handling issues, when we are handling situations that we did not bargain for, it is not time for us to transfer aggression because by so doing, we will just be transferring the pain and making a difficult situation much more worse than it already is. We should be the kind of people who are ready to seek solutions and not situations that will add to the situations that we already have at hand. Grief is one of the most difficult situations to handle. First, you have lost the loved one. There is that pain. There is that vacuum. There is that difficulty that most people find it difficult to handle. It did not start today. Look at the story of Jacob in Genesis 37 from verse 34 to 36. The Bible says that when Jacob is told that he has lost, lost in quotes, when he's told that he has lost Joseph, Jacob is inconsolable. Jacob grieves. Jacob mourns. Jacob does not want to be consoled or comforted by anybody. This is because in life you discover that there is a name when you lose a particular person. If a child loses a parent, you are called an orphan. If it, a husband loses a wife, you are called a widower. If a, wid a woman loses her husband, she is called a widow. But there is no name when you lose a child or when you lose a sibling. Because those are things that hurt the most. Those are things that are not supposed to happen. And so when it happens, it can take you off guard. It can make you go into an early grief. Look at even the story of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 18, from verse 33, right down to 2 Samuel 19, verse 8, you discover that David is mourning for his son Absalom. Despite the fact that his son has usurped his position, despite the fact that his son has hurt him badly, David is a warrior and he has seen people die before. But this one is different because this is blood and blood is thicker than water. David knows that the crime that Absalom is committing is, is as a result of the mistake that he, David, has made. And so he's not ready to let go easily. Despite the fact that his commander-in-chief is making him to understand that what he's doing is not right, David cannot bring himself to relax 
or to rejoice about the death of his son, regardless of what his son has done, because his son remains his son. It's like being a doctor or being a teacher or being somebody in a profession and you see somebody dying before you, your daughter, your son dying before you and you are helpless about it. It's a very painful situation. It's the kind of grief that is hardest to handle. What about Naomi? Look at her story in Ruth chapter 1 from verse 3 to 21. Naomi loses her husband and two sons to a point where she decides to change her name. She tells the people not to call her Naomi but to call her Mara which means bitter because life has been bitter on her side. Handling grief is not an easy thing but we should remember that when these difficult situations come, when these challenging situations come, we should make an effort to check the course so that we can stop the course. The course means the root, and then we can stop the course, the, 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 the flowing, the continuation of it. If you look at the instance of the lady who we are talking about, Adam's situation, if you take track of what had been happening from reports in her family, the death uh, uh, interval was every two years. One person in 2018, the other person in 2020, and now she in 2022. These are not things that we should take lightheartedly. We who are alive, we who have the opportunity to be able to pray, we should be able to look prayerfully into some of the things that are causing the difficulty in our families so that we can be able to stop the cause, we can be able to stop the continuation, we can be able to stop the flow in the place of prayer. We should be the kind of people who wrestle with God the way Jacob is wrestling with God in Genesis 32, 22 to 32. Not because he, he, he is idle, not because he does not have any other option or alternative, but because that is the right thing to do. People should also be keen on therapy. Those trained therapists are not there for the fun of it. They don't just answer the title therapist for the fun of it. It's because they have been trained to be able to make us to talk, those who are going through difficulty, one situation or the other, to get them to talk about it and not bottle it up. Because the more you bottle it up, the more it will become septic. And at some point, it will begin to vent itself consciously or, con or unconsciously. We should be the kind of people who don't give the impression that all is well it is okay to have difficulties if people in bible days also had difficulties how much more us who are on planet earth as long as we are on planet earth there's going to be one difficulty or the other but the difference is at the level of the way we handle it the way we process it surround yourself with people who are positive minded who will take you towards the things of god who will enable you to pray even in your darkest moments who will advise you to seek help to seek a counsel or an, a piece of advice or a therapeutic session in one way or the other from that person who is able who is trained who is skilled to be of help the person could be a pastor or the person could be a, a, a social therapist it is just about getting help talking about it and not leaving it down there thinking that it has healed whereas you have just covered it up and it will be there waiting for the right time to manifest we should be the kind of people who remember to lift up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help our help comes from the lord they make up heaven and earth as we are told in psalms 121 verse 1 difficulties in life come from time to time in different ways through different people in different instances but it is not our place to be discouraged it's not our place to throw in the towel and the environment the onlookers we should be the kind of people who are considerate who are compassionate who don't just talk because we have a mouth who don't just throw comments who don't just you know say things because god has given us the mouth before you say something you have never walked in that person's shoes before so let us try to be considerate and above all let us endeavor to give our lives to Christ because it is only those who will go to heaven who will have the opportunity to be in that place where the bridegroom himself will wipe our tears, where there will be no death, where there will be no pain and where there will be no sorrow. It is our prayer that God will comfort especially Adam's mother who has had to bury so many children and loved ones that God will give her the fortitude to bear the loss. And also, God will also open our eyes to see that which is required of us, to handle grief in a way that we will be able to get healed, we will be able to get out of it and not stay buried in it and eventually enter an early grave. If Christ is not your Lord and Savior of your life, just bow your head and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, wash me with the blood of the Lamb, give me the power to live right and to hate sin. And behold, you'll be getting it right before it becomes too late. 
Place everything in the hands of God because everything in his hands finds his place and is never misplaced. The Bible is the road, Jesus the code, sin the obstacle, and heaven the destination. Shalom, good people of God.